the end of the 70s, the Sudanese government started to work on one of the most grandiose schemes that has ever been undertaken in Africa, the digging of the Jonglei Canal. It was hoped that this would prevent 70 million cubic meters of water a day evaporating and bring North and South Sudan closer together. But civil war broke out. A rebellion among Nilotic black tribes brought operations to a halt when the machine was destroyed. True to say, the Nile is not an Arabian river. These cataracts, like the swamp itself, have long since impeded the breakthrough to the south and Muslim colonization. All the more so, as the British only discovered the sources of the Nile in the 19th century. In the heart of the Sudan, in the province of Kordofan, cave etchings bear witness to the oldest settlements of the southern tribes. Populations such as the Nubas were able to escape from the Arab slave dealers by seeking refuge among these granite rocks. In times gone by, the Nuba perched their villages on the heights in the most inaccessible of places. This mistrust, this fear of strangers, has never left them, and neither has that of baneful influences or possession of spirits, a fear which is daily made manifest in the enduring continuance of minor exorcist motions, making use of the musical whip. The paintings are designed to protect the huts. The men's house among the Nuba stands out distinctly on account of its bright contrasting colors. It's a way of marking out one's territory. The women's house is composed of several small round buildings with an inner courtyard. To each building is allocated a precise function in the life of the household. There's a single entrance keyhole shaped. Inside, we have a bedroom, the kitchen, the millet and sorghum granary, the tool shed. The Nuba, first and foremost, are farmers. The only opening in the grain silo is a bullseye window high up the wall and generally plugged up. Opposite it, the kitchen and its set of calabashes. The more wives Anuba has, the richer and more respected he is. Often his wives are a docile supply of cheap labor, particularly for work in the fields. And then, like elsewhere in Africa, investing in a large family now brings its reward tomorrow. Yet one child out of two will fail to reach the age of seven. <laughs> the Nubas represent a wide variety of populations, 99 tribes, speaking over 50 different dialects. Islam has begun to encroach on certain villages, but old customs die hard. If, for example, Allah were to prohibit eating pork, it would be given another name, because pork is delicious. The Nuba used to live free. They used to live naked, far from police checks. Recently, the Muslim governor of the province, a new style fundamentalist, has made it compulsory to wear shorts. International cooperation has brought thousands of gaudy colored clothes to the Sudan, which have difficulty matching up to the superb body paints of former times. Prison terms are now inflicted upon any Nuba man or woman daring to come out undressed. During the dry season, work in the fields drop off. The men just love that period, a reminder to us of our holiday time. Out on the plains, they keep an eye on their young cattle. 
This is the time when people get down to little jobs, community life, and one can indulge in music making and games. It's a carefree life of tranquility with no timetable to abide by, no productive goals to be met, a haven from stress, but a far cry from all the measures that give us our feelings of security. All Nubas take pleasure in wrestling, which they learn from the cradle. Here we have daily training at the winter camp. Novices are taught poses to intimidate. Parries. Subtle hold. The stuff of true wrestlers, which, for the Nuba, has great value. Fierce wrestling contests are held between villages during this dry season period. Groups from the various hillsides come to challenge or be challenged to gain ascendancy. The wrestlers' bodies are often sprinkled with ash, the significance of which is quasi-religious. Many also carry buffalo hide shields, boughs of acacia, which will be the victor's reward. Last year's champions wear a calabash behind them, like a tail, making it more difficult to fight this year by hampering their movements, a handicap as it were. Nuba wrestling is much more than entertainment. It is magical in nature. Nuba wrestling involves moral and physical assets, values, and a chance for the individual and his clan to survive. For only victorious wrestlers, will be reborn in the next life. Virility is measured in terms of physical strength, of course, but skill, intelligence, and beauty of the body also have their importance, despite the international age shorts. The wrestling matches are arranged according to age group. Contrary to appearance, rules are fairly strict, and the referees often interfere. The purpose is not at all to wound one's adversary, but simply to bowl him over, so that his shoulders touch the ground. The victor's symbolic reward, the acacia branch, will be burnt at night. The ashes will be gathered up, sealed in a bull's horn, that the wrestler will keep until the end of his life. This is important, for one day the body will disappear, but in the bull's horn buried in another grave, his soul will live on in the ashes. Everyone must win at least one fight in his life, otherwise he will be deprived of reincarnation. <laughs> 